Mark Santiago here, and welcome to the Empowered AF Podcast, where each episode we share powerful strategies to help you communicate, act, and lead like an empowered man. Thanks for joining me. Hey, good morning, good morning. So I am so ready to rock and roll. I've got a really great training that I wanted to release today. And I'm so excited to put this out there in the podcast world, as well as our Facebook group world, uh, as well as for our clients, et cetera. Obviously, our clients get greater access to this training, and it goes a lot deeper in what we are doing. But we're going to talk about the what I call the Com Core 4, the Communications Core 4. And as I was developing this concept, um, I, I want to share with you guys a story. So if you don't know, um, over the last several months, I have been on a uh, strength training uh, trip, if you will. And I invested in a really solid trainer uh, named Dave Best. And I'm going to have him hopefully on uh, at some point. We're talking about doing a podcast together. And one of the things that's been interesting is that I, I grew up as an athlete. Um, I played multiple sports. I was into all these things. And over the years, I started to fall away from those things. I started to gain weight. I started to not exercise. And, and you kind of just fall into this rut. I don't know if you've ever been there, but but that was my life, right? And and even during my marriage, I constantly found myself with no energy, lack of testosterone, especially as I got older in my thir- late 30s and 40s, and all of these things were happening. And I got to the place where I said, you know what? Fuck it, man. I, I need to invest in my own health. I need to invest in my body, in my mind. You know, I already had coaches in all kinds of different areas. And so I, I, I decided I'm going to invest a, a good chunk of change into this strength training uh, program. And the goal of the program obviously was to, you know, cut some weight or cut a lot of weight and, and get stronger and get more fit. But there's so many side effects of me going through this process. And so I want to share today some of those sort of side effects, if you will, of what I've experienced in that before I talk about the Com Core. And I'm going to, I'm going to bring these two together, these concepts together. Here's the thing is that yesterday, I was getting, uh, I was doing something and I started craving this exercise that we do with rows, right? So we're constantly utilizing uh, back movements, et cetera. And when I do that exercise, like it just feels strong. Like my body feels strong. I feel fit. I feel all of these things. And so I got this craving and I said, hey man, I texted him. I was like, bro, I can't wait for tomorrow because I'm excited about doing rows. And he's like, fuck yeah. And he sent me a little Hercules gif. And, you know, we're kind of laughing about it. And, and when I got up this morning, I got up 15 minutes earlier so that I could really start waking up because I get up around 5, 5.15, 5.30 to get into the gym. And I was like, I want to, when I get to the gym, I want to be fucking ready, right? And, and, and here's why is because when you drag your ass into the gym, it takes 20 minutes to get kind of warmed up. You do some movement, some exercise, some stretching and all this stuff. And then you start hitting it. Well, by then you're 30 minutes in your workout and you got 30 minutes left. And so you're only going to get a solid 30 minutes or so. And so I was like, fuck that, man. I'm so ready to start moving from this place of apathy, lethargy, and really move into a place where when I show up, I'm ready to fucking go. And it's no different for me showing up at work. It's no different for me showing up with my relationship, with my kids, all of those things. And what I found was that that as I leaned into the process of becoming this new man physically and mentally and emotionally, as I started to lean into it, I became less in love with the outcome. I came less focused on the outcome of what is happening, and I started getting really focused on the process. So the process is for me to show up every single day. The process is for me when I'm not at the gym, I'm riding my bike, I'm going on walks, I'm doing yoga, I'm doing other things. The process is having a meal plan and prepping for those meals and doing those things. And so what happens is when you actually lean in, when you actually lean in and do the work, suddenly something shifts. So some of you are in this place of stagnation where you're not doing the work and therefore you're hoping for some sort of motivation. Let me tell you something. Motivation comes from action. 
and it begets more motivation. So if you step forward and take an action, you will be motivated to continue to do what you're doing. I didn't wake up and say, man, I just can't wait to get to the gym when I first started. Hell fucking no. Why? Because I know I was out of shape. I know I was overweight. I know I hadn't lifted a weight in years and I wasn't ready for it physically, but mentally I said, I have got to fucking do this for my health, for my kids, for my girlfriend, for, for everybody in my life that needs to hear what I have to say. And that's being totally transparent and vulnerable because you guys know that we're about transparency here, that I am the imperfect guru, that we are not trying to put off this thing like we got all our shit together and we're perfect and all this other shit. No, there are weaknesses in every man's life. And that was a weakness of mine that I said, you know what? It no longer should have that power over me. I was disempowered in my body. I was disempowered in the way I felt when I woke up at 40 plus years old. I was disempowered in all those things and I said, I have got to make a change. So I made a change. I invested in coaching. I invested in help. And I have suddenly come to this place where I'm like, I'm so fucking in love with the process. I can't wait to go do back rows tomorrow. So today, it was probably my best gym day. We got inertia wave in. We got in a bunch of different kinds of sets of rows and all those things. And I came out of it saying, fuck, I've got so much energy right now. I'm ready to throw down on a podcast. I'm ready to throw down on clients. I'm ready to throw down on a, an enrollment call with a potential client. All these things. Why? Because I fell in love with the process. The process is everything. If you are going to be successful in life, I don't care if it's in your marriage, I don't care if it's in business, I don't care if it's anything else, if you are so attached to the outcome, to the goal of, of losing weight or, or saving your marriage or getting your kids to do what you want them to do or making a million dollars, if you get so attached to that outcome, it will drive you insane. The where I want to be a year from now, physically, emotionally, financially, all of those things are important and we create goals and we set a vision for it. But if we get so hung up on, well, today I didn't lose the weight I wanted to or today I didn't make as much money or today my wife didn't love me. Today she didn't come back to me. Today this didn't happen. If we get so in love with that outcome, we are missing the process of living. Gentlemen, I'm here to tell you that your life will go on no matter what happens. No matter if your wife comes back or not, your life will continue to go on if you so choose to have it so. I know some guys who are on the verge of, of killing themselves. I know guys that are on the verge of just totally checking out mentally and emotionally because their wife has left them and they don't see anything out there. And I'm here to tell you, if you're listening to my voice right now, that there is more, there is more, there is more, there is more, there is more for you because you have a purpose and you have a life that is not just your relationship. It's not just your wife. It's not just your kids. That you have a purpose. There's something in you that is designed for this world. And even if you have failed, even if you fucked up beyond all recognition, you foobarred this whole fucking relationship, even if you've done that, that does not mean that your life is over. Maybe your life is over as you see it is, and maybe that's a fucking good thing. Because I know where I've screwed up. I know where I've let down. I know where I, I failed in my marriage. And, and did not live to the standard that I would hold myself to. And because of that, I can either go, oh man, I'm just gonna feel sorry for myself, or I'm gonna lean into this process and go, you know what? I may not be where I wanna be, but I'm not where I used to be, and I'm on my way, and I'm oh fucking K. I am oh fucking K, and I'm gonna be okay, because I'm leaning in and I'm doing work. Gentlemen, it comes back to doing the fucking work. If you're not doing the work, if you're sitting on the sidelines and you're just kind of twiddling your thumbs, and you're going, well, I hope maybe if I do this, then she'll come back to me. Or maybe if I call her, or maybe if I text her, or maybe if I do this, that this will happen and this outcome will happen. And you're so attached to the fucking outcome, you are missing the point of life. Life is not about whether or not your wife comes back. Life is about you enjoying every fucking day for your sake, for your sake, because you are of no use to your kids, you're of no use to your job, you're of no use to anybody or anything else if you are not okay. And I see it, thousands of guys come to my group, come to my emails, we get on calls, hundreds of calls a month, 
And we hear the stories. We hear the shit you've been through. Guys, I lived it for 17 years. I know the shit you're going through. I know how fucking hard it is. I know what it's like to find out your wife is cheating and to be a fucking mess and to be just bawling on the ground and doing nothing but just crying for days and weeks on end because you feel like you've died. You feel like you're dead. But I'm here to tell you, you're not fucking dead. You're not over. Your life is not over. No matter what happens, your life is not over. And you can over overcome this if you lean in to the pain and if you go I'm gonna choose a process I'm gonna get my ass out of bed every day I'm gonna go to the gym I'm gonna do those things and I'm gonna lean into a program that has laid out the steps for me how to get my power back how to fucking heal and how to lead again and so today as we talk about that I want to give you some simple technique around this idea of communicating because some of you really, really fucking struggle. Actually, 95%, 98, maybe 99% of men really struggle with communicating. They don't know how to communicate with their wives. They have no idea, especially when it's toxic, especially when she says, I don't want to be married to you anymore, especially when she says, you're a piece of shit, especially when she's fully leaned out of the marriage and you're trying to lean into the marriage. So I'm going to give you a technique today that I call the Calm Core 4 or the communication core four. Now, the purpose of this tool, the very essence of this tool is to help you begin to communicate from a healthy place. And so I'm going to give this to you because I want you to take it. And I want you to start utilizing it now. I want you to start implementing this tool immediately today, right away. Because as you guys know, I give away my best stuff on purpose. Because I believe that if I give you the best tools, you're going to come to me and say, fuck, I, I, need, I need you to help me do this. I need you to help us you know, implement these things. And the guys that come into our VIP program, our Thrive program, the guys that are working with us have taken those basic tools. They tried it and they implemented it. And they realized, hey, you know what? I want to go further with this. I want to go deeper with this. It's fine. If you just want to take it and just do it and you're on your own, good, great, awesome. That's you. But there's other guys that have said, you know what? I want to connect. I want to connect with experts. I want to connect with other coaches. I want to connect with other men who are going through the exact same thing and can walk me through this process. So today I'm going to talk about the communication core four. So here's what it is. Essentially, this is a tool to use whenever you're in a fight with your wife, whenever she's saying she wants out, whenever you disagree with anything that's going on. I want you to remember these core four. And it's important because if you can if you can lean into this core four and you're like, maybe you've heard some of this, but I want to put it to you in a way where it's simple enough for you to remember Com core four, communication core four, and repeat it to yourself over and over again. I'm going to use the Com core four when I'm talking to my wife. I'm going to use the Com core four when I'm talking to my kids. I'm going to use the Com core four when I'm talking to a, uh, an employee or, or somebody I work with or a vendor at my job. I'm going to use the Com core four. And I do. I use these techniques in every part of my life. I use it with my relationship with my girlfriend. I use it with my uh, kids. I use it with my job. I use it with my team. I use it in all these aspects because I found that communication is an essential tool to connection. Every man wants to feel connected, but they just don't know how. You've heard me say it before. Most men grunt. Rah, 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 rah. They don't know how to fucking communicate. They don't know how to articulate what they want. So I want to give you this simple core four exercise that you can do and to think about as you're in these situations. In fact, I would challenge you to practice this every day. I would challenge you to, as part of your routine, because everyone should have some sort of morning routine, some sort of morning formula, you should have that in your life. You should not roll your fat ass out of bed and get up, eat your Cheerios and go to work. Like you should have more to your life than that. There should be an element to what you do that's about your personal development, about you growing as a human being, as you growing as a man. Because the more you can do that, the more you have to give to your kids, the more you have to give to your wife, the more she recognizes, wow, this motherfucker is actually working on himself. And he's not just acting like a piece of shit anymore. He's not just sitting around drinking and feeling sorry for himself, but he's actually got a routine in his life. He's actually got structure in his life. I'm telling you, structure will change things. Boundaries, having boundaries in your life will change things. A train can't go anywhere without train tracks. Those train tracks, a train has to stay on those tracks to get from point A to point B. But if it doesn't have the train tracks, it can't fucking go anywhere. That's what you need in your life. You need boundaries. You need train tracks. 
And so I'm going to give you this boundary that you can use for yourself where you say, hey, you know what? When I'm engaged in conversation with my wife or my kids or anybody else for that matter, I'm going to use the Calm Core 4. So here's the, I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay out for you the, the, the four parts of this, this, this exercise, and then I'll go back through and I'll help you understand why we use each of those and how we're supposed to use it. All right, so here's, here's the core four. Number one, it's clear. Your communication must be clear. Number two, your communication must be concise. Number three, your communication must be calm. Number four, your communication must be certain. So the core four is clear, concise, calm, certain. Say it with me. Clear, concise, calm, certain. Clear, concise, calm, certain. Now, here's the point of that. Because if you start to put that in your mind and you start to dwell on, you start to think on that and you start to go, you know what? I'm a core four kind of communicator. I'm a calm core four kind of guy. So that means I'm clear in what I communicate. I'm concise in what I communicate. I'm calm in how I communicate and I'm certain in how I communicate. So clarity. Why must you be clear? Because the words you say must absolutely be 100% clear so that your wife, so that whoever you're talking to understands what you say. And there's no way for anybody to understand your fucking yelling, your groveling, your complaining. Like I tell my kids all the time, I don't speak wine. I don't speak whining. I might speak wine like drinking wine, but I don't speak you whining. Like when you're whining to me, when you're complaining to me, I go, I don't know what you're talking about. I can't understand a word you're fucking saying because you were whining to me. You were complaining to me. Guess what, folks? Guess what, fellas? Your wife will do the same thing to you. She doesn't understand your groveling. She doesn't understand your complaining. She doesn't understand your bitching and your moaning about how you've, how she's left you and how she's tore you apart, how she's tearing apart the kids. She doesn't give a fuck about those things. So what happens is you must be clear. If you've ever tried to yell and scream and be clear, it's impossible. Oh, the fucking bitch! It's like, what? What is he saying? We yell because we don't feel heard. We yell because we don't feel heard. And so in our yelling and screaming at her, in our text, or out loud with our mouth, in doing that, we're actually the antithesis of what we're trying to go for, which is clarity. And so she's not clear on what the fuck we're saying. She doesn't understand what the hell is going on. It can't happen that way. All right, so clear. Number one is being clear. Number two, concise. Get to the fucking point. So many of you just belabor and moan and all that stuff. I see it on our applications. A guy will write paragraph upon paragraph upon paragraph about what my wife has done and how she's done this and how it's made me feel and blah, 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 blah. The more concise you can be, the better and stronger and more powerful your communication will be. So you must get to the point. If you have to think about it, and go, okay, I'm going to concisely and clearly communicate to her what it is I'm thinking and feeling. That might mean you have to slow the fuck down. That might mean that you have to learn some brevity and, and use words that maybe you're not accustomed to using. We teach these techniques in our Empower Man VIP program. We lay out exactly how to do this in brevity and how to utilize certain word hacks, I would call them, to help you get to the point much more clearly. We set up your conversations. We literally script out conversations between husbands and wives all the time because men don't know how to communicate. So if you're wanting to know how to communicate, we can definitely help you do that. So clarity, concise. Here's the third one, calm, calm. I love the proverb, a soft answer turns away wrath. A soft answer turns away wrath. Some of you get just so hyped. You get so mad. You get so angry. You get so agitated. You can feel all these things coming in your body. Let me tell you something. You can practice self-control. You can practice breathing. You can practice slowing down. I got into uh, a discussion with my ex-wife last week, as a matter of fact, where she had a problem with something with the kids and she was asking for my intervention. I I threw up a boundary and said, nope, I'm not going to get it between that. That's between you and my daughter, et cetera. I'm not going to make her do those things. I won't do it. And she continued to try to berate me. She she continued to try to bait me into it. And I could feel inside of me because I'm not perfect. I'm not Buddhist. I'm not fucking, I don't feel anything. I felt anger starting to rise in me. And I, and I started to repeat to myself, Mark, you know who you are. You're a calm, clear, concise communicator. 
you are a man who knows how to communicate in a strong and powerful way. And so I calmed myself and did not allow myself to raise my voice. I kept my voice right here and was very certain about what I was saying and said, no, I will not do that. And if you have a problem with this, I'm not going to sit here and listen to what you were saying because you are continuously getting out of bounds for me. And I'm going to ask you to leave my house. And so I was very clear, very concise, and very calm. Now, did I feel calm in the moment? No. Did I exude calmness? Yes. And what it helped me do was it helped me look at that conversation and go, okay, where could I have improved the conversation? Now, most of you are like, well, fuck that bitch, blah, 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 and all this stuff. No, I want to learn from it. And so I went back and used what we would call a power triangle and dropped the power triangle in her. And she was like, yeah, it's exactly what uh, I was wanting out of that conversation, right? Because there's still sometimes that toxicity there that tries to peek its head in from our past. And I'm like, no, I won't, I won't let it. Even though we're, we're divorced and we're gone and all that, like that will never happen, but we're still co-parents and I'm going to honor her as a co-parent. So that comes from something deep within where you go, I choose to live a certain way. I choose to respond a certain way. Instead of reacting out of fear, I'm responding out of who I want to be. Personally, I want to respond out of love. doesn't matter who it is because I don't hate that person. I don't hate her for what happened. I hate the situation and I hate how it ended. But the fact of the matter is, is I still want to come from a place of love. So we are clear. We are concise. We are calm. And the final one is we are certain. We're certain. People are looking for certainty and especially women. They want to know that you are absolutely 100 fucking percent certain about what you are saying. In fact, certainty is actually a persuasion technique and it's utilized in all kinds of industries, especially in sales. Because if somebody wants to buy, somebody wants to invest in our program and I'm like, well, you know, maybe we can help you. Maybe we can get your results. You're going to be like, dude, I don't, I'm not going to invest with them. They don't know what the fuck they're doing. But we are certain when we are actually certain, because we don't lie, we go, I know your situation. I understand what you're going through. And our tools are set up in such a way to help you get the results. We're 100% certain. And I will say that I'm 100% certain if you come in and do the work, 100% of the work, you will get 100% of the results you're looking for. And that makes the man feel certain. But imagine flipping that for a female and saying, I'm 100% confident, honey, that I'm going to do these. These are the things that are happening. And this is the way we're going to move forward. And this is how it's going to be. Now, every situation is different. Some of you don't need to be talking to her directly in that particular matter. But you can be certain on your co-parenting. You can be certain on all kinds of things with what you're doing. See, because a lack of certainty causes insecurity in the listener. A lack of certainty in your communication causes insecurity in the listener. So what's happening is you're projecting your insecurity onto them and they feel like you're not certain. And how many of you, I bet, if you were to raise your hands, listening, watching, whatever, I bet you would say, my wife doesn't believe me when I say things because she does not feel like you are certain. And because you know what? You're probably not. Let me tell you something, guys. I hate saying this, but most of you are fucking liars. You're fucking liars. And I've been a liar. I, I still lie sometimes. There are times where I am lying to myself and I need other men in my life to call me out and say, Mark, I, ha I have that coach. I have that consultant that works with me and is like, Mike, you're lying to yourself. If you think this is what's going on, you're fucking lying to yourself. Every man needs another man in their life saying, you're a fucking liar. You're fucking lying to yourself because you don't want to face the fucking truth. And it's shame. Guys, we feel shame. There's a difference between guilt and shame. Guilt is all about the fact that you fucked up, you messed up, and you own it. Shame says, because I fucked up, I am a fuck up. It's an identity. And so many of you are wearing that identity. And I'm here to tell you, that is not your lot in life. You do not have to wear this shame tag like a big S on your chest. That is not who you are meant to be, who you were born to be. You can be free of that shame if you choose to. Here's how you get free of shame. You get honest. You get fucking honest. I love it. I love it when a guy comes on the phone with me and says, honestly, man, I want to be able to do this. I can't make it work right now because of this. And they're at least honest with me. Yesterday, I had uh, a vendor who was wanting to pitch me on a service to continue, and I didn't see the value in it. 
And I said to him, hey, man, I appreciate you. And I, I think what you guys have done so far was good, but I don't see the value in continuing. Therefore, I'm going to end this where it's at. And he appreciated the fact that I was honest with him. Guys, imagine how different our world would be if men were honest, if men stopped fucking lying to each other. Here's the reason you lie to other men. Here's the reason you lie to your wife, because you're lying to yourself. You're lying to yourself. You're lying to yourself. You have to stop lying to yourself in order for you to grow up. You have to. If you really want change, if you really want transformation, I call bullshit until you stop lying to yourself. Gentlemen, I hear it all the time. Again, we talk to hundreds of guys every single month. There's thousands of you in our group. There's thousands of you that download our podcast. There's thousands of you on our on our email list. There's all these guys out there, and we see the excuses because every single day there's another excuse. There's another thing. Talking to a guy the other day, yeah, man, I'm I'm in. I want to do this program, all this. But then it was like, but I've got these other things happening, and all this is going on, and and then. He, I didn't hear back from him for a while. And then he finally was like, yeah, I want to do it, but I got to wait a couple months because I got to do these projects. Or I got to do these things. I said, so what you're telling me is that those projects, which really have no bearing on anything uh, you know, other than some financial stuff, those projects you're putting in front of your growth. And he never responded. And the reason for that is because men are fucking liars. They lie to themselves. They lie to themselves because they don't want to be honest with, you know what, I, I, I like the idea of change, but I don't really want to go through the work. How many of you have ever seen a guy with a six pack abs and a ripped chest and you're like, dude, that guy's fucking ripped. And you're like, man, I bet if I look like that, I'd get every girl in the, in, in, you know, in the East coast of the USA or whatever. I'd get all these girls. I'd get all this attention. I'd get whatever. If I look like that, man, I would have, it would be awesome. And so you go, you know what? I'm going to start working out. I'm going to buy a program and I'm going to start working out. I'm going to start doing this thing. But then you hit a plateau. You hit a place. You hit resistance. And that resistance where you go, fuck it, man. I don't need a six pack. I don't need Ripley abs. I don't need that shit because it becomes too hard. You have to be honest with yourself and go, do you really want transformation? Do you really want change? Because if you say you do, then it's not going to matter what your wife says. It's not going to matter what your boss says. It's not going to matter what your kids say. It's not going to matter what your best friend says, your pastor says. It's not going to matter what anybody else says. What it's going to matter is what you believe about you and what you want. Every one of the clients in my program, we've had hundreds of guys go through the program, and every one of them would come to this place and say, you know what? I got to a place where I was ready to stop lying to myself. I was ready to take responsibility and I was ready to lean into the pain and do the fucking work it takes. Guys, if that's you, you should definitely connect with us. Hope this helped. Core communication, core four training. I'll put it in notes so you have it written out. Clear, concise, calm, certain. Clear, concise, calm, certain. Implement those this week when you're communicating with whoever, your wife, your kids, your job, etc. Love you guys. See you soon. Hey, if what you heard today really resonated with you and you want to connect with me, then here's what I want you to do. Pull out your phone right now and go to empoweredman.co slash group. That's empoweredman.co, not com, dot co slash group. So you can join our free Facebook group and connect with me there. We also have a ton of free content and trainings in that group to help you when you join. So until then, this is Mark signing off on Empowered AF.